Cuba and the United States have taken huge steps recently to normalize relationships between these two countries. Now that Americans have begun to travel freely to the island nation, a new partnership has formed around the sport of tennis. This episode looks at how tennis is playing an intricate role in the diplomatic and human relationships between these two nations. About a year and a half ago, Jake Agna uh, came to us at the Cuban American Friendship Society and said, hey, I'm interested in going to Cuba um, and seeing how we might be able to help the Cuban people in, 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 in the context of the tennis. I went down there thinking that I was really going to help them teach tennis or I don't know. I had so many ideas of what I was going to do when I got down there. I was completely blown away. Right off the bat, I was so inspired saying, man, these guys understand how you can succeed. Listen, listen, listen. Escuchen primero. One of the best things about Cuba are your coaches. Lo mejor, una de las mejores cosas que hay en Cuba son sus entrenadores. Your coaches are the best I've seen. I've been around. Sus entrenadores son los mejores que yo he visto en el mundo. So keep listening to your coaches. Entonces, so within a few days, I told the guys, I said, man, I've seen enough. I got to try to get you some balls some hoppers, some straining machines, some rackets, shoes, and then I've got to get you some courts, because the courts were the most beat up courts I've ever been on. Jake being the, the, the stand up individual that he is, he came back to us and he said, I think what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to, to bring these tennis courts back to life uh, so that these kids can get involved uh, with this sport in a much uh, uh, safer, more exciting, appropriate manner. Uh, and we were really excited about that. Problem was, nobody had virtually in the past 60 years had ever done a bricks and mortar project in Cuba. What we're trying to do is the first times, probably since 1960, that something other than the recognized categories can be sent. So it's new uncharted territory. So no one has done this in 60 years. And so we decided we needed to apply for what's called a specific license uh, in order to do that. So we asked the State Department, the Treasury Department, Department of Commerce, formally of course, for, for a license to do this project, to repair these public tennis courts, uh, not knowing what to expect. Um, and we worked with a good legal team uh, and, and put together a really strong license application. And uh, a couple days before Thanksgiving last year, uh, we got notification that the license had been approved, um, which essentially allowed us to then move forward uh, on, on repairing these tennis courts. I never heard of Cuban yeah, tennis, yeah. but I never really concentrated that much. So I knew baseball was tremendous. I knew boxing was good, but I didn't know about tennis. But their tennis is very good for being isolated from the world as long as they have. Tennis is not a sport that is recognized in Cuba, but we are trying to make it more conocido and that the people who are interested in it will be more interested in the sport. Pero no es tan, la, la pelota es más conocida aquí, pero el tenis creo que poco a poco se va a ir introduciendo más en, la, en el pueblo. Bueno. I brought down a tennis pro out of Miami. He, within the second day, said, you gotta be kidding me, these kids are unbelievably good players. And you know, with training, like we have up here, like weights, um, these kids are going to take off. I mean, that, that country is going to put out some players. Creo que una de las cosas que el tenis no es tan popular es porque deberían haber un poco más instalaciones, no sé. Eh, ahora, últimamente, en la televisión se, no se ponía mucho el deporte, 
pero ahora sí se están poniendo más los partidos, los abiertos, los Grand Slam, y eso sí creo que ha influenciado a que la, la población le guste más. Poco a poco, en los últimos años, se ha incrementado el gusto del tenis en nuestro país. Yo creo que es un paso muy importante que estamos dando los dos países, que, que ya era hora ya que hubiera un intercambio, no solo en los Estados Unidos, sino con cualquier país que estamos dispuestos a, a hacer relaciones y que vengan ellos y nosotros y poder, poder ir también y un intercambio. Siempre es bueno el deporte, la cultura, en todo, sí, es bueno. Yo creo que sí, que, que es muy favorable para nuestro país. What they need now is they need what we're going to do is we're going to build the National Tennis Center to the point where the courts are really good. That whole center, it's called the Pan American Park. So they have a track and field arena. They have a soccer fields. They must have baseball fields as well. And then what we saw was this tennis uh, center that was all built for the Pan American Games back in the 90s. They went through this special period where the Soviet Union collapsed, lost much of their support, uh, so there was less money uh, available for infrastructure. So that was just over a couple of decades uh, without a whole lot of preventive maintenance, the courts ended up where they are today. <laughs> Everybody pick up a few balls. Everybody pick up a few balls, we'll get started. I met Jake in 1998 when I worked at the club where he teaches tennis. And he was concerned that it was an exclusive group. And he always thinks tennis should be inclusive. So he had the idea to bring kids from youth programs in downtown Burlington into his tennis to make it um, a better demographic mix. So I helped him partner with uh, youth centers to change that mix and change the demographic. And in doing so, Kids on the Ball was born. At the base of all of this is his idea that everyone can learn something from each other. And so he had the idea to expand the program to Cuba. Hey, uh, check out this guy. I played doubles with my man here. He's great. Uh, uh, this guy made a uh, speech one time about what tennis has done for him as far as wanting to live and wanting to go on with, you know, with his life. And uh, it was, it was uh, heavy. Why take on a project like this? Um, well, I just met the people. Like, I went to the Marti Center, and I met the people, and within a few moments, I felt like they were the kind of people that I, I wanted to help. For me, it just seemed like the right thing to do. So here we are at the uh, Cuban Federation of Tennis. Um, bringing the guys down for the first time to kind of get a look at the site and let them touch it, feel it, and taste it because this is where we're going to be for the next 14 days. Yeah, but our grinders will take all that up. These are the tennis courts we're going to work on here. Um, courts there. This is the building here uh, that is the next phase. Um, I came out here a year ago, and that this is what I first saw is these courts. But the, um, these are the worst, too. When we get over there, you'll see. Are they see. really? Geez, these aren't as bad so as I thought So we pop as much loose, skim it, yeah. and then how much uh, tack did they send? Enough for a little tack. Just try. We've seen them, and 
sur resurface leave, them, and leave, then leave once the resurface is on, we just keep moving. Yeah. But once we put the, you know, we'll get these two courts started because there's minimal repair. We'll go work on these two, come back this way, then we'll go to this end, come back this way. And I think with the teams that we've got in place, it's just going to be a consistent flow of each day. We get this kind of weather, we'll be out of here in 14 days, I think. Everyone's probably wanted to come to Cuba, so and not a lot of people have the chance to, being from America and everything. So uh, I was pretty psyched to be able to make it out here and get on this project, and I think as well as everyone else. So and we've got the first work issued visa since the Eisenhower administration, and I think that's uh, pretty spectacular, and I'm glad to be a part of that. I don't think we ran into any problems or issues. I think our biggest problem right now is are our containers going to show up tomorrow? And if our containers all show up tomorrow, this job will will go very, very easily. Uh, all the guys are on board. Uh, they saw pictures and photos of this 20 months ago. We'll all be pretty jammed up by the time we leave, eh, boys? <laughs> What's it make you think? It's a project. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. I, I think what's riding on the first phase is the belief of the Cuban people that we can make things happen. And they already love Jake, and they love seeing us come, and they love what we do with the kids. But I think that they need to see this first phase completed to really believe that we can make this all happen. So it's, this has been the hardest part for Jake, is waiting. Wait, wait is not in his vocabulary. He likes things to happen right away. So that this has taken so long to actually happen has been really tough for him. So when things get signed and we're almost ready to go, he's, he's, his anxiety level goes down. I think it's wonderful that Americans are able to travel more to Cuba, okay? Um, I think there's lots of things that we as Americans can learn from Cubans, and there's things we can share with our Cubans that they can learn from us. That's what uh, mutual respect and friendship is all about. That's what neighboring countries are all about. It's not about building walls. Uh, it's about breaking them down and building bridges, quite frankly. Um, and so I am not concerned in the slightest about additional Americans going down there. The Cubans are smart people, they're capable people, they're educated people, they're gonna figure it out. Um, but that's, that's an important point. We have to respect that they're gonna figure it out. Um, and just because we're going down and helping them restore these public tennis courts doesn't grant us any special access. It's up to the Cuban people how they wanna move forward in light of the influx of, of American tourists. Um, and, and I trust that they're gonna, they're gonna do what they need to do. Many thanks for being with us bright and early on this morning, a very special day for JetBlue, the launch of our 100th Blue City, Havana, Cuba, with our very first flight from Orlando. After making history on August 31st as the first commercial airline in 50 years to fly to Cuba, we are very excited to be here today and launch service to Havana from Orlando. Once we have completed our launches to Havana, JetBlue will be servicing seven daily flights to Cuba from three of our major focus cities, that being JFK, Orlando, and in Fort Lauderdale. Si necesita cualquier asistencia, no duden dejarnos saber. Nuevamente, muy buenos días y bienvenidos a bordo. Uh, right now, the containers have been approved. Uh, to come through, so now it's just a matter of waiting for them to, to arrive, and we hope that they'll arrive sometime early this afternoon, because at this point, we're three days behind schedule. And any further delays could impact, uh, from a financial perspective, both uh, the project and future projects. So we're really anxious about making sure that we can get this thing done, the, the containers here today, and then have the work still completed by December 8th, 7th, 8th or so. Uh, but it all depends on 
the bureaucratic process making its way through. Supposedly all the trucks are over there, so... Well, the trucks are there, there it doesn't matter where we are in the queue. Do we know the what... trucks are there for our containers, is what, I, is what we've been told. Oh, you're going to have to grind down the whole thing We have gotten assurances now that uh, some documents that had to be finalized relative to the release of the containers from the port uh, has taken place. The company that is actually transporting the containers to the facility is at the port arranging that to take place today. We're hoping that sometime after lunch we'll see these these containers arrive, we'll start to unload the containers. We're going to focus on the fencing portion of the project because that really needs to be done first. And then once the other containers are here today and tomorrow, we'll begin the actual probably process of getting the courts prepped and ready for the surfacing that'll go down. How are you feeling about everything? Uh, well, right now I'm a little concerned about the delay in the uh, materials arriving because we've already lost three days um, and that just puts everything back. From a financial perspective, it's costing a lot more money. Also, guys had committed to a certain number of days here and they have other projects and other work back in, the, uh, back in their own companies. So there is a little bit of a concern right now. And we have our fingers crossed that everything's gonna happen today and uh, then they'll just have to hustle. If it does come in today, then I think these guys are really looking at, they're talking about 12 hour days, starting work at six in the morning until six at night to try to make up for the, the days that we missed over the last you know, few days. So we'll see. I'm not actually right now, I'm not that optimistic. So we've got, so I sent him a nice detailed up to date email as to where we stand. Don't worry, the guys had a tour kind of a day Monday to, you know, see Old Havana and experience the culture and get a little nice little tour. And then yet today we took them to the beach for the day. And uh, so their batteries are going to be well charged and we're going to get the <laughs> pavement running tomorrow. We got it sorted out. It took, we were here for four or five days before we could really get anything started, uh, which I kept. I, I, I kept worrying more about my guys and their morale and wondering, is this thing going to actually happen? And then we got assurances uh, from the president of the Federation of Transportation that everything would would be uh, looked at, looked into immediately, which it was. And um, we got the containers uh, Thursday, uh, Friday, and Saturday, and. Um, ended up started working on this past Sunday. So we've only worked Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Tomorrow will be our fourth day, so. Bueno, eh, estas son la, las chicas del equipo nacional, las que representamos al país por el, por el deporte. Eh, sí, estamos muy contentos con la gestión de la cancha porque eh, podemos entrenar mejor, podemos hacer torneos y desarrollar aún más el tenis en el país. We're waiting now for temperatures to get to the point where we can put the seaming tape on the final two courts that need to be seamed. We're color coding court six right now, and we've got courts eight and nine that will be ready for resurfacer and then color. Modern technology at 
work. We'll be on modern marbles before we know it. And we're pouring it into these bottles that used to have water in them. And we improvised by making them a device that we could squeeze the material out and then uh, pour onto the surface. Uh, I don't know what day it is now. I think it's been like a month, but uh, we're finally trying to get all the uh, edges seamed up. We've got all the quartz laid out, the matting's down. Uh, I think we've got five quartz fully painted and striped, and uh, now we're just waiting on the sun so we can get some seams done and uh, hopefully start painting and stuff and get this stuff done by the weekend. I just remember stepping on the court with uh, my daughter, you know, who had played a lot of tennis with me. And um, my wife was around the court, but I just remember standing next to my daughter and we looked at each other and we said, you've got to be kidding me. Um, the, the level of play and this enthusiasm and the, um, it just the spirit of the people was phenomenal. It's just who they are. And of course, the big story, former Cuban leader Fidel Castro has died at the age of 90. This has been confirmed by Cuban state media. Jake's work, the work that Cass is doing, the work that President Obama has done, the work that the Major League Baseball did when they went down there and played baseball, those are all slowly breaking down that wall that has been in control of our politicians for 60 years. I want, I want these, I want to have them share what they know about community, about um, about playing the next ball. Our, our theme at uh, Kids on the Ball is play the next ball, and then whatever happens, play the next ball, and be able to get over it. Uh, because I think for, especially people without means, they need to uh, not ruminate in what's not fair, and what's, um, and what, um, a lot of the things that kids have a hard time in the States with, is just play the next ball. And that's a good habit to get into, just to try to go to the next moment, be positive, uh, use the opportunities you have, and just try to get on with your life. Because, you know, for me, I had every opportunity, and a lot of the people I'm around, but with people that don't have opportunity, they've got to use their opportunities. The kids are kids, no matter where you go. They are excited to play. They are excited to win. They're excited to try again. Um, they're kids, and I think even though we didn't necessarily speak their language, it didn't matter. We were there playing and having a grand time and they're kids. And, and tennis lets you communicate with them without being able to speak the same language. I asked the Greek one. I don't know, I think that they're super good, that they're going to help us with our training, to improve and to improve. Para avanzar en, en el nivel de juego. Eh, bueno, nos hace mejores porque la, las canchas que tenemos anteriores, le, la, la pelota era diferente, no podemos entrenar bien, eh, no se podían jugar torneos porque no estaban en condiciones las canchas. Yo pienso que con las canchas nuevas todo mejor. Bueno, yo quisiera ser una tenista profesional. Eh, poder representar a mi país en importantes torneos, 
eh, jugó a Gran Slam, como todos los tenistas. Claro, <risa> no. Eh, estamos muy felices. It is historic, and I think that that's the uh, sometimes with the stresses and, and the of the of what we're doing. Uh, I forget that this is the first time that anything like this has been done in probably 60 plus years, and to have it done through uh, you know the the work of a small organization like Kids on the Ball, someone like Jake Agna who's done an unbelievable job um, and his vision of helping improve. Um, the connections between Cuba and the U.S., helping to find ways of bridging um, the gaps that we have between our two countries through sports is wonderful. We've never lost focus on what the ultimate goal here is, uh, is really to engage with Cuban children, Cuban youth through the sport of tennis. Uh, it feels pretty good. I mean, it took a little longer than we expected, but um, I'm glad to be here to see the finished product. I'm glad we didn't have to get out of here before it was done. I mean, luckily we got to get home before Christmas and everything, but uh, like I said, I'm glad. I'm glad we got to finish it. I'm glad we got to help out. It seems like everyone here loves it, and uh, hopefully it'll do a little something for Cuban-American relations, and uh, maybe our country will be able to come over here more often and uh, help out a little bit more. I wanted, I tried to say to people that the value of this in the long run is that these kids can come to Burlington, Vermont. They can come to Los Angeles. When, the, when our countries open up, we'll be really impressed with how they play because they're great players. That they're gonna take these opportunities that they're gonna get and they're gonna go way further with it.